Yeah, so t two important things to have it work without managers. And then you can just put questions of all sorts. So I have started from scratch with some small businesses in healthcare, in uh, education, in uh, uh, and also in call center, but I also took over old organizations that were a lot of managers around. So the key thing is the working climate, as I said here before. And, and that sounds much easier than it is. So people are really polite and, and insecure at workplaces. So we don't have we don't have a history of, of being honest and direct at our workplace. We pretend to be grown ups and uh, you know skilled and you know have it all together. So there's no room for being a human being really with all your pitfalls and your your not so nice sides. So. So fostering that kind of climate where you can have straightforward talking. So like to be able to say, I don't feel, I don't feel listened to here. I think you decide everything. If somebody says this to, to somebody else, that, that takes a lot of time and effort to, to have that sort of working climate. And what is needed is that you know people and that you know where, where, where you have people, where, uh, trust, that you know that you can trust people. Uh, then you can try to be honest and straight. Uh, and, and, and that it's not done in a flush. And the other thing is, um, if you are going to deal with managers, Anyway, I mean, I try to avoid it, as I said, because it's so few managers that has, that has emp empowerment skills from, uh, in themselves. And usually they are not the easiest one to train to be empowering either, because they became managers for some other reason, because of their drive, their knowledge, or, yeah, or their expertise in some way. So often there is somebody else in the organization that are much more suitable for being <laughs> trained in empowermental skills, <laughs> more or less. So I did that mistake many, many times. I thought I would train the managers, the, the, the manager I inherited. <laughs> and I was very often disappointed and have to reorganize again. So don't underestimate that challenge it's really and just just a few words of how you how you do it so you talk so how to to, to foster that climate uh, it's really to to invite as James said here to invite people to have that sort of climate do you want can you see any benefits with an open climate where feedback can happen so everybody needs to choose to have that climate because the, they are the people that are going to produce that climate. Nobody else. So, so if they are not convinced about the benefits, it won't happen. And it's scary to, to start to speak your heart or speak your mind. Or, and this is not just speaking opinions in Sweden. A lot of people say, we have a really high ceiling, you know. You can say anything on this workplace. Well, I say, you probably can, because opinions is okay to have about everything. But is it, is it okay to say to your manager, I don't think you're listening to us in a meeting. Is it that okay? Then I can agree on you having... But, but, but really natural feedback climate, I very seldom experience. So that's a difference. And it's scary to have that because you have to take risk and that you, you, you need to, yeah, you need to believe there is trust there. So those two things really, and among other. But